Oof. Second channel? I don't know, dude. It's funny. This might be good first channel content. Oh, yeah. Quick question, by the way. How is everyone, every Chad who watches my YouTube videos, how are you enjoying the editing? It's a refinement process. Obviously, it's a big jump since we did like two years of no editing. Um, yeah, I think on, on the whole, I think that it's been really good. I think that the it's it's been very positive. Um, every once in a while, I see something that I think like, eh, you know, but, but it's a long going process and hopefully we work. It's definitely more accessible. That to me is the goal. Accessibility is the goal. I love the little load in at the beginning. I like the fact it makes it a little bit more like peppy, you know? And if you ever want to watch uh, unedited, I mean, it's all on the YouTube, it's all on the YouTube VODs and the Twitch VODs. So it's, yeah, the fact that they can add extra information is awesome, you know? The load in is really good. Yeah, for sure. Is the second channel for the streams or extra stuff? The second, the, so, I don't want to overload people with content, okay? There are two types of Vosh viewers. There are people who sub to the first channel and get one video a day of high-quality content, and then there are people who sub to both channels and get two to three videos a day of high-quality content, okay? The stuff that I think is going to be the most popular I put on the main channel, but the second channel, the goal is to have the additional content. I legit hate the editing. It makes the videos way less appealing to watch and encourage me to just listen. Instead, a lot of the added pieces are just pointless graphics. We're working on refining stuff. There's definitely some stuff that we're, um, we're, we're looking at. But I think that overall, it's been a positive reception to begin with. And that does make me happy. No, guys, it's, it's fine. Guys, it's, it's fine. It's, it's fine. It's fine. It's, uh, it's a process, you know? I really don't like the load in. It's kind of like spoilers for the video for me. And I also don't like something I'm going to see taking up my time. I understand that, but unfortunately, the load in is definitely going to stay because I'm pretty sure that is like algorithmically guaranteed to increase viewer retention. You want to show people because since my videos are stream VODs, like they're never going to open with the most bombastic part. So you want to give a highlight of what's to come. It increases viewer retention, which is important. It's just good. It, it just it just works. Yeah. It's a, yeah, it's a stinger. That's what it's called. So it's, it's a stinger. But we'll we'll keep refining. We'll keep refining. Got to get that hook. Yeah, to like give you an example, the you the viewer retention algorithm is really really like crazy. If you look at um not the algorithm, the uh, viewer retention rates. If I look at let's go to the video where I watched the TPUSA stuff with Shu. If I go to the analytics, and then I go down to the yeah, here we go. This is what it looks like, okay? The very beginning, the first point here is 66%, meaning that only a third of the people who load the page actually begin the video. And then only half of those people watch the first minute and a half. It's insane. Of the views on a video, only like around a third to like a tenth actually watch the entire thing, which is wild when you think about it. You want to front load a lot of like important information. Those have to be misclicks. Sometimes they can be, yeah, but that factors into every video, you know? Uh, but if you put a stinger in, let me see. I, I could um, I could about to be about to have egg on my face because I don't know if this is going to show up. But yeah, here we go. This is the Jimmy Dore video that had a stinger at the beginning. And as you can see, uh, as for people, the beginning of the watch view, it begins at 75% rather than 33%. Like the first, like it, past the beginning point. And then to watching to the end, it's 35% rather than the like 17% it was for the last one. This is a shorter video too. Yeah, but even the early metrics are, are definitely an improvement. Um, let me try to find a comparably long video that went, did well. Let me see. This one has a stinger, right? I think this one has a stinger. I don't think this one has a stinger. Hold on. What about this one? This one's recent. The debate with the Brit Bong. Okay, I think this is reasonably better. The first fall off point is at 48% rather than 33%. It still goes down really low towards the end, but that's also because it's a debate, which means that it's a modern day debate video, which means that the last half of it is like Q&A stuff, you know? Um, this is, this is definitely a preference, you know? Lol, my video with almost 50k views has a watch percentage of 18%. Yeah, we want to look at the average percentage viewed, which is going to vary tremendously, but like that's 20.1%. The video with shoe on head was, um, the video with shoe on head was, um, 18.8%. If I try to find another long video, let me see if I can, 
if I look at the MRA video, that video <clears throat> had a, a stinger, and its retention, 22.4%. That just seems to be common for long videos. What about for short videos? Or what about the weakest generation guy? No, uh, maybe not. Crowder runs from Sam Cedar on the H3 podcast. Uh, let me see. What does that one look like? 28.4%. Okay, here's something that I don't get. I think when this happens and you see spikes in the middle, I think that's people clicking on timestamps. I So I'm guessing that these timestamps right here are right when Sam Cedar actually comes on. And then they watch from that point. And this one's at 28.4%, which is a relatively good one for a long, uh, long video like that. If I take a look at that Kyle Kalinske video, which was popular, of course, um, about 50%. Probably because it was a pretty dramatic video, you know. Timestamps are very, very important. Timestamps and stingers at the beginning of your videos, very, very important. The anti-segregationist video that I did with that the, the lady on TikTok, wow, that one was also really good. 55%. That right there is solid. What people really seem to like, people, uh, debates are not going to have as high of average view percentages, but quick video responses or drama will. They will have relatively high ones. And of course, I want the high um, viewer retention, uh, not just because it means more ad revenue, but because this is one of the qualifiers that YouTube uses to determine the video's algorithmic worth. The more uh, ad-friendly a video is, the more likely YouTube is to put it on the sidebar where other people will watch it. I can give you another example of that. Uh, let me try to find a video that did okay, but was not monetized. Here, let's look at this Steven Crowder one, okay? Uh, this Steven Crowder video, this is not monetized. Uh, we were still figuring out the ropes back then on how to secure monetization. It has a 50% or 48.6% average percentage viewed. Really, really good there um, because it was direct. It was a response to a video. It was immediate. Would you rather us tune into streams or watch your videos? That's a tough question. I kind of like you, you know, both. Uh, only a small minority of the people who watch my videos will tune in for the streams. I would prefer you here in the live streams first and foremost, I think, because I like you being here, you know? Um, but it's probably better for my career that you care about the videos. I could stream with like 100 viewers. As long as the videos got the same views, I would still be as influential in total, but I like having a large audience. It makes me feel nice. So anyway, so here's something that's worth looking at, okay? This is how viewers found this video. So right now we're looking at a video which is not monetized. Actually, wait, hold on. Let's not look at a video that's not monetized. Let's take a look at a video which is... Um, limited monetization which i need now we've gotten rid of all the limited monetization videos let me see if i can find one here this one's about grimes so this one's a short video very punchy and it's about drama so it should do well algorithmically and yes 53.5 percent duration viewed people really dropped off at the end there i probably petered out or responded to some viewer questions or something like that do you make more money from money from vids or streams i make more money from youtube uh, adsense generally um I, actually, I think it's like 50-50. I'll check the Saint Shane Dawson one in a second, but I'm pretty sure that one was not monetized. You should check your charity stream. The charity stream made like nothing. Well, it made nothing for me. It made like 300,000 for Palestinian children. Anyway, um, wait, why doesn't it have the... Um, hold on. Why doesn't this have the... Um, oh, that's interesting. I haven't seen this before. Key moments for audience retention. Continuous segment. Viewers watch this section without dropping off. Great job. And this describes a period of the video where there was like no drop off in viewer retention. So this was an area that was so interesting that it kept people's attention. That is a very interesting tool. I might keep an eye on that in the future. I might be able to learn from that. I'm trying to find the, um, I don't know why it's not being shown on this video. The, the video details here. So this is the Jimmy Dore video. Uh, analytics. There we go. Views. Uh, okay, what about... Oh, here's a PragerU video. Uh, this was not monetized. Do we have the viewer retention? No, wait, where is it? Are they deleting this information because of the change to the monetization? Well, I hope not, because this is useful to me. I didn't know about this. Shoo, you're a YouTuber. I I'm, I'm kidding. I mean, for in, in reality, like, I'm only just learning this stuff now myself. Um, YouTube does not really, like, teach the people who use its platforms how to use them. I wonder if your offline videos have a higher retention since people wouldn't have seen it on stream. 
I have, I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes it is super tempting, like super, super tempting, to unlist stream vods just to force you guys to watch the actual videos, which I can monetize and will be algorithmically recognized, rather than have you watch it in the stream vods immediately afterwards. I could probably get like ten to twenty thousand more views on every single video if I did that, but I probably shouldn't. You guys, to, I want you guys to have the full vods to look at. Of course, what I could do is I could enlist them, then relist them a week later afterwards, but no, I'll keep the VODs in. You guys deserve that. Okay, um, what about this? Okay, here's a punchy video. Is this also... No, this also doesn't have that information. Damn it! Okay, well, here's the information that I'm looking for right now. I'll, I'll, I'll show you VODs don't make money. VODs make, like, zero money. I'll take a look at the last VOD. They, no, no, well right now I literally have my VODs unmonetized. It's an algorithm thing. So no, I make literally zero money off them ad revenue wise, which is a shame because all of them have like 50, 60, 70,000 views. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's about the Costco hot dog. Why would you watch VODs? Eh, it's like a podcast. How much do you get per view? That depends on the CPM of a video. Uh, it's how many dollars you make on average per thousand views. Some of my videos have had their CPM climbing recently due to some based and red-pilled editing and monetization. It used to be that my average was around 450. Every thousand views, I'd get 450. Later, lately, it's been closer to eight or nine, with some videos spiking even above that, which is really awesome. Again, the higher the CPM, that means that the advertisers are valuing the viewer or, or the view more, which means that YouTube will promote the video more. Uh, so it all feeds into itself. In, on YouTube, the methods that make you money are the methods that grow the channel. So if you get 90k views, you get $81. No, it would have been 450, 490k. Um, some of the videos that I've made have gotten significant uh, viewership, or so significant amounts of money, and some of them get like nothing. Um, I can't find the information that I'm looking for, but the point that I'm trying to get at right here, this is the Jimmy Dore video. It shows you how viewers found this video, okay? So this is extremely PogChamp, all right? Notice how only 10.6% of the people who found this video uh, did so through their subscription feed. However, a large percentage of people found it through YouTube recommendations and YouTube Home. It shows right here, you know? Normally, yeah, it gets better in this regard. What this means is that YouTube was more comfortable recommending this video algorithmically. People didn't find it because they were sub to me. People found it because YouTube wanted them to see it. That is the good stuff right there. And if I can fully take advantage of these processes, we can grow this channel massively. That's the goal. I gotta know your CTR minus 5.5%. Uh, uh, on this video, what is CTR? I don't know what is, what is CTR. I don't know what that means. So anyway, that's the power. <clears throat> Critical theory race, yeah. I'm a subbed and still clicking all the videos from the recommended section. YouTube sucks to inform about sub updates. Yeah, yeah, that's true. YouTube isn't perfect about this stuff, but yeah, the, um, the CPM for the Jimmy Dore video was about 826, which is awesome, you know? And if I go back and I find a video like, uh, one that got demonetized, like, uh, bah, 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 this one, analytics, revenue, oh wait, this one doesn't have it anymore because we demonetized all those old videos. Ha! Yeah, sorry, a lot of this info isn't going to be available anymore because we went back and demonetized all of our limited monetization videos, costing me, by the way, tens of thousands, but we're doing it in the hope of it producing long-term algorithmic benefits. How much money do you make off YouTube Premium? Um, let me see, 5k a month? 6k a month? Ballparking it? It's mostly ad revenue. Uh, that makes the difference. What is YouTube Premium? It's a subscription service to YouTube that gives you some benefits and it also just pays channels that you watch. Don't know why, but okay. Have your subscriptions grown much since the changes were implemented? Little bit, not by much. We're still stalling a bit. However, a bunch of other analytics have gone up, so it's a matter of time, you know? We'll get there. Yeah, also if you have YouTube Premium, uh, you don't see ads. Does it give you money if uh, premiums watch your ads? It just gives you money, period, you know? Uh, if people with YouTube Premium watch your stuff. Would you consider YouTubers workers or owners of business that contract content to YouTube? No, we're contractors of YouTube. They pay us as contractors. R really, the old, like, Marxist dichotomy for labor and, like, workers and value and stuff doesn't work that well for, like, some elements of the modern service economy. Just roll with it. How much did that Shane Dawson video make?
views. Nearly 900,000 on this video. Yeah, this one this one was limited monetization, and now it is demonetized. So I no longer make money from the Shane Dawson video. But before we took it off the plug, uh, about 3K from that video, with nearly a million views. I mean, you know, um, 3,000 for a video that made nearly a million views really isn't that much. If a video essayist was making a video like that, that could potentially take like weeks and weeks to make. It depends on the type of content that you do. Because for me, it was just a live stream segment. So, you know. Um, but that's because it was limited monetization. Now, the, the, the conservative hype house video, it says it's monetized. Uh, but I don't think it was always monetized. I have a feeling it was only recently monetized. Because, yeah, I remember it not being monetized in the past. What's an old video that always was monetized? The Ben Shapiro one? Do you see less money from your game streams slash segments you make during those? Do you make more money from the released vid segments of those? It really, really varies. Uh, hold on. Analytics. Okay, I think this one also wasn't monetized until recently because the playback-based CPM has spiked at certain points. Huh, interesting. And it didn't make any money at all for the first couple months? I don't know how this shit works. <laughs> uh, wait, one last one. What's the video that's made the most in revenue? If we take a look, uh, Lifetime Channel, revenue, revenue. Huh, no. The videos that, the three videos that have made the most money are all stream VODs. All day election coverage, a Noita text-to-speech stream, and the BLM fundraiser that I did while playing Minecraft. And then it's the Shane Dawson video cancel con. We'll change these numbers. We'll we'll mix it. We'll mix it and dix it. Does that count super chats? Yes, it counts super chats. Otherwise it would make very little. If we're only looking at ad revenue, then it would be the Shane Dawson video. Alright, have we had enough behind the scenes?